We are joined with the fantastic Latoya and Juliet. So without further ado, let's make some noise. Let's make them feel welcome. Thank you very much for joining this session. I hope you're having a great day so far. Uh, my name is Becky. I'm Director of Retail Strategy at Move the Link. And in this session, we're going to be talking about a topic that is front of mind for many marketers right now, and that's doing more with less. So many of us are working with fewer resources, perhaps smaller teams, smaller budgets, uh, but business expectations of, of our performance certainly haven't decreased. So how are brands better able to automate workflows and still achieve really strong results? So to help us answer that question, I have two amazing guests joining me. We have Latoya Lambert, Head of Strategic Planning at Uxnetta Porter, and Julia Avery, CRM Manager at Mr. Porter. Um, so welcome, both of you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, do you want to kick us off with an intro? Yeah, sure. So my name is Toya. I'm the Head of Strategic Planning at Ukes and uh, Porte. I've been working in e-com and CRM for around 11 years and Ukes and Netaport have just over four years. So myself and my team are responsible for the strategic calendar planning activity across the four brands. So this means focusing on own channels, email push, web push, and looking at actually how we can support the various brand marketing messages. So we're looking at also retention driving activities, promotions, brand partnerships, as well as some of our kind of seasonal messaging like Black Friday, party, gifting, Christmas, you name it, we do it. And we call all of this activity business as usual. So, hi, I'm Julia. I am the CRM manager at Mr. Porter. So I've been in the business for about a year and a half, but I've been working in CRM for about eight years. So I'm essentially responsible for building, owning, executing the CRM strategy for the Mr. Porter brand. So this is driving the roadmap of MarTech, automations, triggered activity, through to cross-channel acquisition projects. Um, and I'm essentially responsible for driving traffic and revenue through the owned channels to support the business. I work really closely with Toya's team and how we kind of build out those BAU calendars to drive the best customer experience for each of our subscribers. Amazing. Um, and for anyone who isn't super familiar with Ukes Netta Porter, tell us a little bit more about the brands. Okay, cool. So Ukes Netta Porter or Net Net as Porte, depending on um, which one you want to say, um, comprises of four brands. So Mr. Porter, Netta Porter, The Outnet and Ukes. And Mr. Porter has been using um, Move the Link over the past few years now. And then more recently, we onboarded the other three brands at the start of this year. So uh, Mr. Porter and Netta Porter are global online retailers of in-season luxury and contemporary fashion brands. So as you probably know, Netta Porter is women's wear, Mr. Porter men's wear, but they also both sell homeware, grooming and beauty and some kids wear as well. So the Outnet is the sister brand of Netta Porter and Mr. Porter, and this focuses on luxury discounted shopping. The Outnet started in 2009 and offers only over 350 designer brands at up to 70% off, so do check it out. And more recently they launched um, menswear as well, which is great. And then finally, Ukes. So Ukes is essentially kind of a one-stop shop when it comes to everything. So think fashion, art, homeware, you name it, Ukes has it. It started in Italy in uh, early 2000s. And I would say that Ukes is very similar to the Outnet in terms of the kind of promotional proposition um, with a kind of firm mix of off-season and on-season products. And then Ukes has its own brand as well, which is Auto by Ukes. Okay. Love that, thank you. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about how you have automated your processes, streamlined lots of your workflows. Before we get into all of that, let's take a bit of a look back. Walk me through what were some of the challenges that you were facing as a CRM team? Yeah, sure. So I think looking at these kind of four key challenge points, I think it's kind of these aren't any surprise to anybody in this room. I think anyone at any given time um, in terms of um, your businesses has kind of seen this in terms from a, a CRM point, point of view. But I think the first one kind of sending everything to everyone, we really have seen a continuous challenge of how we support and balance marketing support and then, and then segmentation as well. So we've definitely felt the pressure of increasing our marketing, uh, sorry, we've definitely felt the pressure of increased marketing activity and actually the uh, the teams are then pushing this kind of key message has to go out to everybody regardless of the actual full target audience and um, own channels especially um, email as seems a kind of free and quick easy way to kind of make sure this full 
visibility of these uh, marketing messages, whilst not really, I think the business doesn't really truly understand that. There's one team here asking for support for their key message, and then another team here asking for support, and then another team here as well. Yeah. And what happens is that we then create this kind of huge calendar of activity every single day. So from the net porter side, we were averaging around 17 to 18 emails a week, which is obviously over two a day, um, trying to kind of fulfill all these needs of all these different teams. And, you know, it's the teams believe that this message has to go out to everybody and they kind of ignore the kind of data side. And as as kind of CRM marketeers, we do know best, but it kind of the brand element trumps any of that. Mm. Um, and what happens, the, out, the outcome of this is that then there's a waterfall effect in terms of, OK, we've got all of these um, messages, but then we need a design team to help create all of this content as well. Um, which brings me on to kind of point two, which is wider stakeholders. So I would say the CRM function is a tiny, teeny, tiny function and the small part of all the teams that are kind of involved in kind of bringing the comms to life. And we need support from the translations team, the fashion team, the merchandising team, the visual uh, merchandising teams as well. And what, based on all the activity that we've been told to actually um, support, we then have to then reach out to these stakeholders and essentially double their workload on a day-to-day -day basis by ha having to drive all of this activity when the data shows that actually if we segmented, it would have been a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so kind of building then on what Toya said, what that essentially led to is all of our campaigns working in silos. We were having to work with different teams on individual messages being sent out and it essentially has led to massive customer fatigue. We were sending way too much, way too frequently. Um, our metrics were then declining and not just in terms of engagement, but we weren't seeing the pull through of traffic and revenue that we know we should be doing. Even when it came to campaigns that we know would drive engagement or we had this a strong assumption it would drive that engagement and traffic, it wasn't because it wasn't cutting through the noise that, of everything else that had to be sent. Yeah, absolutely. I saw a few nods in the room as you were talking about that. I think a lot of those challenges really resonate with a lot of the audience. Um, so let's move on to how you streamline that then. Your goal was obviously to alleviate some of those challenges. What were some of the specifics that you were trying to achieve when it came to automation? Sure. So we kind of had three goals. So yeah, streamlining execution is really where we wanted to start. So we have obviously, as Toya has touched on, there's lots of different teams that feed into the CRM process. We work with a number of different teams who want to have their message executed, but also work with lots of different teams in order to execute that. So we spend a lot of time in doing things like picking products or sending multiple versions of campaigns. And we just wanted to kind of wipe the slate clean and work out how do we streamline all of that. Localization, as we'll speak about in more detail later, is a huge thing for us. Having our business has global reach, but we are one kind of global team executing all of that. We need to be able to react to what's going on in all of the regional sites, but with one team to do that. So how could we kind of scale that activity? And just touching on the lo localization point, this was really a bit of like a buzzword for the business um, at, at the moment. So just for um, context, we launched three new uh, languages this year. So Japanese, South Korean and Italian and there's a expectation to ensure that all of our content across BAU and automation is fully translated in these languages as well as our more established um, French, German, simplified Chinese as well which we have to acquire, which we have to support on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And then I guess the final kind of goal we were looking at was elevating the customer experience. So I guess ultimately all of us driving towards customer centricity. Um, but when the cadence of our communications are as high as they were, like that's just never going to happen. Um, it wasn't as easy. It wasn't that easy a job to kind of pull back on it. But that's what we have started doing is just to pull back and kind of determine what's the right message that should be sent to the right person. Yeah. Shift from volume to value, which yeah. I think is a really great way of phrasing it. So um, let's dig into some of the detail of what that looks like. How are you solving for some of those challenges now? 
Sure. So uh, one of the things that we've been looking at is really automating that production process. So this campaign is an example of where we've um, where we've used web crops, which pulls products direct from the site. And we can then filter those products that are pulled from site based on the person who's going to be receiving it. So if you're dependent on which region you're in, it will pull direct from that region's or country's page. But also we can segment down the products which are pulled through at an individual level based on things like their AOV. So if somebody's got a higher propensity to be shopping higher price point products, that's what's going to be showing for them. Um, and it also then means that the customer is being able to get a really positive end-to-end -end journey because where it's using these web crops, it means that it's updated based on whether something's low in stock or out of stock and pulling direct through to the email based on when they're going to be opening it, giving them that kind of real-time personalization and journey. We also used uh, CSV powered language translations. So that allowed us to kind of effectively carry out that localization piece as well. Excellent. Um, so one more example here. Cool. Okay. So this is case study two. So focusing again on the kind of production execution side, the production team at times are building each of these campaigns from scratch. So around 10 per week on the, Mr. on the Mr. Porter side. With the help of uh, Movable Link, what, what we did was actually create um, templated module sections. And these sections essentially become the building blocks for the structure of your email, of our email. So the blocks can be increased or, de or decreased, collapsed, depending on the segmentation of the campaign and the target audience also. The modules itself were created as a, as a kind of like standalone project with the design team, but then these can actually be used like m multiple times. So it does take a bit of effort to actually build like build these blocks out. But then once they're done, they're, act they're actually done. <clears throat> what we also did was um, with the new in page, this is basically one of our business priority pages. So new in is basically focusing on newly uploaded products um, and on the Mr. P Mr. Porter side, this happens three times a week. <clears throat> what we actually did was we created these modules, which actually pulls in in real time um, imagery or the actual um, products from the, um, from the page and then allowed us to kind of remove the soulless emails, which we used to send three times a week um, from our calendars and instead have this small section which still drives the daily weekly traffic to this page but without actually having to have a whole email this was like this was a bit of like a game changer even though it's like a small tweak and yeah. um, we also created top 20 banner support so there's certain brands um celine fear of god that we have to support from a mr p side throughout the year and throughout the different seasons what we would do in the past is we would ask the design team to create these um, banners to sit on our emails and then every season when the imagery re refreshed they would have to create another bank of um, banners. With Move but Link, what we've done is created an, a, a CSV file which houses all of the translations of the banners, all of the imagery and we then, then created these um, dynamic blocks for the banners as well and all we have to do is every season go in, update the images and that's it, done. This saved so much time. I think in total, I think it was around 70% of the production time. It, it saved by just having these um, these banners. So really, really great way and real small tweak again um, for what used to be a kind of resource intensive project. Yeah, that's amazing that you were able to save time and also reach towards that customer centricity of sending the right thing at the right time to the right person. Um, Amazing. And then loyalty program is another big focus for you right now. Yeah. So the final thing that we wanted to share was just how we've been able to deliver better kind of connected journeys through using movable link. So loyalty is a really core strategic pillar for us this year. We've actually expanded our loyalty proposition. It used to be one tier. We now have four tiers. Um, but with that, what we really wanted to be able to do was to communicate it in an ongoing basis, not just as we've kind of mentioned before, having these soulless standalone communications, which essentially just add more noise to the mix. What we um, have kind of done here is to start pulling in um, the 
are progression banners, that's it. Yeah. Progression banners which show like where somebody is in their current tier, but they're, then how, they, how far away they are from their next one. What the hope is with that is that it will drive towards that kind of like trickle feeding through engagement that we can just place really super simply in a lot of our BAU campaigns. On the right hand side, what you can then see as well is how we've been using um, behavioral, 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 sorry, God, um, behavioral banners based on what somebody's either browsing or what they've purchased before to deliver kind of a bit more of a personalized one to one experience in all the comms. Essentially, the hope is, is that creatively we're bringing together all of these elements so that rather than having all these standalone communications we're building a multi-block kind of campaign with messages which are going to be more relevant for each individual kind of communicating that back to the business as well um, when we went through our building our strategy at the start of the year i found it really helpful to just share back creatively to our senior management to say by sending all these individual campaigns this is what a week in the life looks like for a subscriber at Mr Porter and Etta Porte and I think by showing that they maybe didn't realise what that meant into someone's inbox getting up on their phone every time they get a push notification and given that kind of creative understanding of we are just sending way too much allowed us to have a bit more I guess like power in saying let us let us use better segmentation let us use these kind of like block formatted approach and it's worked really well yeah. put yourself in the feet of the customer and exactly see what they're experiencing. yeah absolutely um so looking ahead then what's next on your roadmap um, a glass of wine is next. Um, <laughs> so in terms of what's next, I'm so nervous still. Um, in terms of what's next is going into peak season. So we are in quarter three for our business. So it's going into um, peak season, focusing on the split between the promotional activity, Black Friday, Singles Day, private sales, as well as the full price activity, Christmas holiday party. So what we're going to be doing is using... Um, move the link to create some of these kind of standalone campaigns and helping kind of eleva elevate the customer experience. So using move the link, we'll be um, introducing our advent calendar, which has a scratch in re reveal app. We're going to be utilizing the, the um, countdown timers, social proofing, web, crop web, web cropping, you name it, we're actually going to be using it. Um, as Julia and I have both mentioned, um, we will be focusing heavily on Japan and South Korea this year, spotlight for sure. And um, we are also going to be trying to ensure that our translations calendar um, has the same content and cadence as our English calendar and all of our emails will be fully trans translated. Um, the final thing that we're going to be doing is trying to bridge the gap between BAU and automation. So automation from a um, UX net supporter side sits in a different team within uh, CRM. So two, 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 two teams. And what we're trying to do is reduce the calendar activity that, that, that we're sending out. So one email a day to one customer. This email will then have elements of the automation world and the BAU, BAU world together. So what that, what, that, what that means is that if there was a customer who quali qualified for a abandoned basket email, what they would find within the email is promotional um, support pushing potentially Black Friday, as well as um, gifting support, as well as explain to them that if they were to spend an extra £5,000, they would then reach the next level of tiering in our re rewards as well. Then on the flip side, when it comes to the automation side will then be kind of pushing some of our BAU marketing messages inside of our automation journey. So looking at potentially the welcome email, we might then um, adding in, you know, we've seen that in your region, um, customers like these types of products and trying to kind of push that first, that first purchase or first, second uh, purchase as well. Yep. So lots of things that we kind of need to do over the year and hopefully we can come back n next year and have loads more slides with loads more kind of different <laughs> um, different various activities that we've, that, that we've done. Yeah, love that. Looks like we have lots of slides. There we go. Um, no, love what you said there about blending the best yeah. of both with the automation and the BAU. I think it's such an imperative. Um, so key takeaways then, if I am a retailer in the room today, what's one, two, one or two things that you want to leave me with? So I think what we've kind of presented isn't really groundbreaking. I think it's just really how can you cut the execution time and work workload time, not just from like, from like a CRM point, point of view, but all the different stakeholders in the business. And we're now at a point where we have teams that have no 
background in uh, CRM asking how Movable Link can actually amplify their messages, which is great. Um, it's a really like, exciting time for us. It's taken a long time to get to this point, um, but we're really excited about the future. Yeah. I think from my side, look, segmentation is key when you've got a marketing calendar, which is as busy as ours, segmentation is key. And it's about building up those kind of results and test and learn approach to be able to share back with the business. Like if we do this, it not only delivers a better customer experience, but in time you're gonna be driving ongoing long-term engagement and a kind of better, better traffic and revenue drivers too. And then lastly, use what you already know, like don't always think about reinventing the wheel. Like these quick wins can make such a difference internally and then what you see in your results as well. Amazing. Love that. Thank you both so much for sharing all of your insights. Um, you can connect with Latoya and Juliet if you scan the QR codes. That will take you through to their LinkedIn pages and they'll be around this afternoon with a glass of wine in hand probably. Um, so thank you very much for joining us.